Riding on the clouds. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. Lift your voice. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Holy Mountain. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You're going to get us out of here, Lord. In your timing, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Give us perseverance. Give us patience and strength to continue on. Hallelujah. He comes riding on the clouds. Yes. Praise you. Salvation Lord. Amen. Still salvation. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise Him. Praise Him. Hallelujah. We glorify you, Jesus. One more here. We're going to war, saints. Get ready. We're about to go to war. We're warriors. Uh, warriors. We used to sing this in church. <laughs> we are the people of God. We're ready for war. Amen. Are you ready? We're getting ready for war. Holy, my team, Satan, you better beware, we're getting ready. We stand victorious, people of God, we're ready for war. Amen, we're ready, Lord. Boldly, it's my team. Say you better beware. We're ready for war. It's a roaring lion seeking you may devour. He cuts, tries to do the down. Put on the whole Yes, put that shit on the To come against him. In the name of the Lord, we got it. Marlin. Yes, we are as warriors. We are warriors. Amen. We stand victorious. We are the people of God. We're ready for war. Thank you, Lord. You're raising up a mighty army. Amen. We are his mighty. Ready for war. We're ready, Lord. Listen. No, it's not. I know. Yes. Yes, praise God. 
Good morning, Saints. Well, thank you for tuning in to Dawn's Harp Out Corner. My name is Dawn O'Brien. I'm a prophet servant of the Lord. Praise God. You know, I, God is so awesome. You know, he let me have some sleep last night. Praise the Lord. You know, I've got a video coming up showing you know, our sleeping days are over, Saints. I truly believe that because I'm up like every hour and it's like up and down, up and down. The Holy Spirit is speaking to me continually. And I don't believe it's just me. I believe there are others, watchmen, that are awake, waiting, because they know something is about to take place. You know, you can feel it in the air. You know, I just gave a word about, um, about, um, I'm trying to remember the name of it. I don't have it right on hand here. Let me see if I have it here. Yeah, I just gave a word, um, America stands in judgment today. I'm talking about Israel and how we're trying to divide Israel and we need not go there. All right. And I uh, give a warning to President Donald Trump, which I've given several warnings, you know, and others are talking about what, what the Holy Spirit is showing them, you know, dividing in our, in our nation, which God has given me that as well. You know, just like we're trying to divide Israel, God is going to divide America and half and there's going to be a lot of disasters and things that are happening that are going to occur i really truly believe for the return of christ um we've talked about uh, how we're living in a modern day Sodom gomorrah and um we are saints i mean we are seeing our the world is changing very very quickly and we've got to keep our focus and attention on god and uh, follow him because if not, we're going to change things. And um, we've got to uh, stay on fire. We've got to um, be looking for the return of Christ because he could come at any hour. Now, I don't know. Nobody knows when the Lord is going to come back. One day is like a thousand years. A thousand years are like one day, but Jesus will return again. You know, and um, somebody was asking me, do you know a date? No, I don't know. God does not tell me. He does not got to tell any of us, okay? He's going to tell his son, go get your children. You know, but when iniquity, Daniel was talking to me about this, when iniquity has reached its limit, you know, God's going to start judging, and which we've already seen, but it's going to increase up until the return of Christ. So we are going to see more things happen. Um, David Wilkerson talked about it, and um, what about all those earthquakes, volcanoes on the ring of fire? I've talked about dead fish, dead birds. You know, I've sent letters to President Donald Trump trying to warn him what is coming. Um, I've sent letters on emails as well, and I've placed them up on their YouTube. You know, we in America are not paying attention, and I'm telling you right now, God is getting ready to um, uh, judge our nation and the nations of this world. And, um, you know, he was showing me, you know, because, you know, it's kind of like, you know, when you were younger, I've talked about this before, you know, God's going to discipline us. He's going to discipline the body of Christ and then he's going to judge the world because he wants to get you and I ready uh, so that we can stand before the Lord blameless. And he's coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle. And, you know, we, we tend to try to push God as far as we can go, you know. And then at a, we're all like that. And that, that reminds us when we were kids, you know, I don't know about you. I grew up, my father was Italian. He was very strict, I'm going to tell you right now. And he just gave us the eyes and we knew, hey, my brother and I, we better behave. Because if not, off came the belt. My dad did not mess around, you know. And so... You know, can you imagine that's your earthly father? Can you imagine what your heavenly father is going to do? So we try to push God and see what we can get away with. But I'm going to tell you right now, he's going to say, that's it. That's enough. And he's just going to judge our nation. You know, we, um, it's like we come together and when something bad happens and then we go back to doing what we were doing before. It's like no, no big deal. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, and I've got a word I'm going to share with you, um, Prepare now for destruction that he gave me at 2.51 a.m. on 2.16. Now, and I'm also going to talk about children. You are in boot camp. I wanted to talk to you about what God shared with me about that. 
he also, you know, he's continually speaking. This morning, you know, I told you, you know, God is so awesome because I told him, I said, God, don't speak to me, you know, because, you know, I'm so tired. And I was like, God, I'm not like your disciples, you know, disciples were amazing, okay? You know, Paul went without sleep. I said, God, I have to have some sleep. I can't do this. I said, I'm not like Paul, you know, I'm not like Moses, you know, you know, when I, I told you when, when I told him I didn't shave my legs, he said, well, Moses, you know, he ate locusts and honey while you worry about your legs. And I'm thinking, well, I'm not Moses, God, you know, so I don't think any of us are where we need to be. God is changing us from glory to glory. This morning, though, he did speak to me. I said, I told the Lord, I said, okay, God, you can speak to me now. I'm up and I'm ready. And, you know, I think it was like five, ten minutes later, I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me, which I'm not going to share right now. Children, this is your time to go forth. Let's pray. Let's invite the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for the same. This is the day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, Lord. You are our grace, our strength. You're, you're our help, Lord. We cannot do anything without you, Lord. I can't get out of that bed without you, Jesus. You are my help, Lord. You help each one of us as we look to you, Lord. Father, we thank you for this day. This is the day you may will rejoice and we'll be glad in it, Lord, no matter what we're going through today. No matter what the situation, the circumstances, we're going to praise you, Lord. We offer up a sacrifice of praise, Lord, and give you thanksgiving. Lord, we just love you. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and grace, Lord. We ask you to cleanse us, wash us in your blood. Help us to draw closer to you, Lord, and keep our focus on you. We come against all distractions right now in Jesus' name. Father, I ask your word to go forth, and I only speak words that you would have me say. In Jesus' name, we give you praise. Amen, amen. Okay, so um, I want to uh, read this to you first before I share these words with you. Um, let's have a word. Uh, this was a word from Prophet Russ. I'm reading part of his word. This was from the, the 16th. The Father says today, you're under my protection. By my presence alone, darkness is dispelled and demons cannot approach, he says. Just the virtue of my presence in your life attracts favor and blessing into your situation. Amen. By me, by my presence, there is an aroma around you that is repugnant to some and very attractive to others. Total strangers will stop you and say, excuse me, what is that fragrance, that aftershave that you're wearing? With a smile, you will say, it is himself. Amen. It's Jesus. Amen. You will walk through dangers illuminated with my presence and be unconcerned. Others will shriek and run away, but you will stand there perfectly composed with my hand on your shoulders, knowing you live in an impenetrable. Impenetrable. I can't. I'm terrible at pronouncing words. Impenetrable shield of my glory and goodness in your life. Marsha Burns said this day: Many of you are overwhelmed with life circumstances, and stress has overtaken you. Huh, how about you? Huh? Are you overwhelmed with some circumstances? Do not be afraid. I will lead you to a high place in the spirit where you can see yourself more objectively and make the necessary adjustments to fulfill divine destiny. Be willing to let go of those things that create needless tension, says the Lord. You know, we, we've got things in all of our lives. We, You know, as the time goes faster and faster, we have to cut things out of our schedule. God is showing me that more and more. Because if not, those things are going to cause stress, all right? We're going to get stressful. So we've got to take a look at what, what are we spending our time doing. We need to be doing what God has asked us to do. And that goes for me as well. We all need to be focused and do what God wants us to do. Lord, I just pray that for all of us, Lord, including myself, Lord that we'll be led by your spirit and only do what it is you're asking us to do and not be pulled in all these other directions, doing things that you're not wanting us to do in Jesus' name. Psalm 32, 8, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Prophet Russ says this, the Father says, say, I'm your helper and your high tower this day. Find your defense in my presence. Arm yourself and arm your mind with my thoughts. There is no need to look here or there for some solution for I am your answer in every difficulty that you face. That's right. No matter what you're going through, you can always go to Jesus. He is there. All right. 
Thank you, Lord. I mean, you know, he's not just a crutch. He's there to help you and me. God is there. You know, people are waking up now. I really truly really believe God was showing me this, that there are those now waking up because, you know, they're starting to see the light. The arm of the flesh will not deliver you, nor the counsels of the uninformed. I'm your guide, and the voice speaking over your shoulders saying, This is the way. Walk you in it. And he will. The Holy Spirit will show you where to go, what to do, if you will go to God in prayer, if you'll seek him. You aren't going to be able to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and get through the obstacles that are in your path. Choose life. Choose a tree of life. Choose the life that I am on the inside of you. For I'm binding myself in your life and I'm branching myself in your life as you choose, as you make a committed choice to abide in me. When others are around you, choose the tabernacle of men. Set your face like a flint until I bring you into the high places where only my voice is heard and only my counsels are forthcoming. Do not be afraid of their faces, says the Father, even those of your posers. You will not be confounded. You will not be ashamed. My voice is directing and my voice is spelling out for you moment by moment what comes next. It isn't necessary to have all the answers of every twist and turn before you. For I'm making the crooked path straight and lifting you out of the mirror of man's thoughts and even your own carnal thoughts. For I'm giving you my mind and my understanding. See, you're not always going to know the way, okay? It's going to be unclear at times. But God will show you, saints. You know, you may be walking blindly and you can't see. You know, that's why I know there are those saying, well, God, you want me to go here? You want me to go there? Sometimes the Holy Spirit will have you step out and you'll find that's not God's will. I told you that time I was, um, I got, I wanted, I went to work at a job over here, but, you know, and it wasn't me. It was, you know, it wasn't God, it was me, because, uh, you know, Daniel see me at the store, and I was standing, and I was tired, I didn't want to do it, and I was like, God, you're making me work, and God said, no, I'm not making you work, you're making yourself work, because, see, God provides our needs, but, you know, like all of us, we have wants, okay, God promised to meet our needs, all right, but we, we want this, or we want that, and that's not part of God's plan. So we have to be led by his spirit and do what he's asking us to do. You know, so I knew instantly that was not what God wanted me to do. And I, I quit that, you know, because then they changed the hours and uh, they changed everything. So um, I knew it wasn't the Holy Spirit because it didn't come into line. And I know that this was my calling to stay home and and share prophetic words with you because I don't sleep very well as it is. You know, I'm up and down, up and down. And this is a job. I know people say, well, that's not a job. Oh, yes, it is. I'm telling you right now, it's work. You know, because if it wasn't, others would be doing it. And it's a price to pay. You're sacrificing yourself, not doing what the world's doing. The world you're watching, go here, go there, make decisions. They're, they're not even seeking the Lord. I hate to say that, but there are many... Um, non-Christians and even Christians, I hate to say that, that are not doing what God has asked them to do. You know, because I'm going to tell you right now, when you do things God's way, it's not going to be easy. He'll make you do things that you don't want to do. And you can say, oh, oh, that's not God. Oh, yes, it is. God will make you take up your cross and follow him and make you do those uncomfortable things. All right. So Prophet Russ says this, it is necessary to have all the answers of every twist and turn before you see, so you don't have to have all the answers. He says down here, know that I'm with you, know that I'm surrounding you, I'm a wall of fire around you in the midst. This is a time of change and a time of maturing. See, you've got to be willing to mature in Christ. You have to be willing to say, yes, Lord. You know, if you're not willing, God's not going to do it in you. I'm going to tell you right now, uh, we say we want to change. But are we willing to do those things that are uncomfortable? Think about it. All right? We want to mature and we want to change, but are we willing to go the extra mile and do those uncomfortable things that Jesus is asking us to do? I don't think any of us want to do it. But I'll tell you right now, there have been times uh, throughout my walk, you know, I didn't want to do it. But you know what? I said, God, I need you to help me to do it. Give me grace and strength to do what my flesh does not want to do. 
Because I'm going to tell you right now, your flesh is not going to want to do those uncomfortable things. All right. But if you want to mature in Christ, you're going to take a step forward and you're going to say, yes, Lord, I'm willing to obey you. I'm willing to do what you're asking me to do. Help me, Lord, because I can't do it on my own, Lord. So give me the strength and the boldness to go forward and, and do what you're asking me to do. Maybe there's those I'm talking to right now. The Holy Spirit is stopping me. There may be those right now that God is showing you things that you need to do, but you haven't been doing those things. Just make a step today and just say, Lord, forgive me. I have not been doing what you're asking me to do in the past, Lord. But I choose today to make a step forward and obey you, Lord. Because, Lord, I want to mature. I want what you have. I don't want what my flesh wants, Lord. I want what you have because you see into the future. In Jesus' name. Just pray that. Just go to God. He hears you. All right? And he will give you the grace and strength to do what you can't do. All right? He proper us this says, Come out of the leeks and garlics of Egypt distractions. Separate yourself from the mixed multitude, for they haven't entered, entered in, and guess what? They never will. Well, I'm going to stop here and say, you know, things are going to come at you. Distractions are going to come, all right? But you've got to let your spirit man be stronger than your flesh. Because if your flesh is in control, it'll overrule your spirit man. So you've got to be strong in the spirit. And you've got to deny your flesh. You've got to say no to your flesh and say yes to God. You have to make that decision, saints. God's not going to do it for you. You have to make a decision and say, yes, Lord, I'm going to do what you're asking me to do. Because I'm going to tell you right now, God's not going to do it for you. You'll go your whole Christian walk doing the same thing if you keep doing it. You have got to make the decision yourself. He's not going to do it for you. And I'm, I said that before, I'm going to say it again. Because I know there's so still that have not yet made the decision. You've got to lay it all down the line and say, yes, Lord, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to do what you're asking me to do. Lord, it's not easy and I, I can't do it. You've got to tell them that, saints. Tell them you can't do it. I need you to do it in me. See, that's how you got to talk to God. Just tell him, be yourself. Don't try to be something you're not. All right, let's take the mask off. Let's let's be who God created us to be. Let's stop acting like we're some somebody else. Be real. Let's be real Christians. That's what God's looking at. He's looking at our hearts. All right? We can fool man, but you can't we can't fool God. God sees everything. He knows what what you're going to do before you even do it. He knows what's going on behind closed doors. You can't fool God. So just be honest before God. That's what God's looking for. Honesty. You know, he's not looking for you to be perfect or me to be perfect. He's looking for us to be honest. Lord, help us to be honest with you. I know when I'm struggling with something, I, I just go to you and I tell you, Lord. That's what you want, our honesty, Lord. We can't be perfect, Lord. Only you're perfect, Lord. We're all changing from glory to glory. So help us to quit judging one another, love one another, love our brothers, love our sisters. And just be who you've created us to be today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. He says, I've given you the heart of a sojourner, and as you walk with me in the way, I reveal myself to you and make known to you my wisdom, even the hidden wisdom and revealed in ages past, but now made evident, even in the midst of the battle. All right. Praise God. I want to share this word with you um, from our daily bread. I don't know if you get it, but I felt led to share it. It's called Unimaginable. Though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Psalm 23, 4. Bart Miller penned a mega hit in 2001 when he wrote, I can only imagine. The song pictures how amazing it will be to be in Christ's presence. Miller's lyrics offer comfort to our family that next year when our 17-year-old daughter Melissa died in a car accident and we imagine what it was like for her to be in God's presence. But imagine spoke to me in a different way in the days following Mel's death. As fathers of Melissa's friends approached me, full of concern and pain, they said, I can't imagine what you're going through. Their expressions were helpful, showing that they were grappling with our loss in an apathetic 
way, finding it unimaginable. David pinpointed the depth of great loss when he described walking through the darkest valley. The death of a loved one certainly is that, and we sometimes have no idea how we're going to navigate the darkness. We can't imagine ever being able to come out on the other side. But as God promised to be with us in our darkest valley now, he also provides great hope for the future by assuring us that beyond the valley will be in his presence. For the believer to be away from the body means being present with him. 2 Corinthians 5.8 That can help us navigate the unimaginable as we imagine our future reunion with him and others. And here's a reflective prayer. Thank you God for being with us even in the darkest valley as we imagine the glories of heaven. I want to read you um, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness. For his name's sake, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, maybe I'm talking and there are those that are going through a, a dark valley right now. You're going through a very dark situation. Maybe you lost a loved one and you're hurting and you feel all alone. Or maybe you're just going through trials after trials and you don't know how you're going to get through this. Um, I want you to know that God is there and God loves you. I want to pray for you. Father, I pray for all those that are going through a dark valley right now. They feel lonely. They're hurting, Lord. Maybe they lost a loved one. Maybe they're just going through trials. Maybe um, they're sick in body or they have a loved one that's sick, Lord. Father, I pray for them today. I ask you to give them strength, Lord, that you would help them, Lord, to be overcomers, Lord, and that you haven't left them, Lord, and that this isn't the end, Lord. This is only the beginning, Lord, and that they will be reunited with their loved ones, Lord. If, if they know you, Jesus, then they don't need to worry about them. They're in a better place. They're with you, Lord Jesus. I pray for them today that you give them grace and give them strength to, to just Go on, Lord. Give them hope in their situation where they feel like giving up and they don't even want to, to go on another day, Lord. I pray for them today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Now, I want to play you two songs, and I pray they encourage you. Um, I played this before, and I love it. He will carry you. problem too big God cannot solve it there is no mountain too tall he cannot move there is no storm too dark God cannot calm No sorrows to deep, he cannot save me. He carries the weight of the world upon his shoulders. I do not doubt that he will carry you. Thank you. 
One more, I like this one, in the presence of Jehovah. Let me minister our lovely song. We need to sing this in our church. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you. 
Amen. Amen. I love that song. Let's put the full armor on today, and then I want to give you a little quick, some quick news. So we're going to put this armor on. Remember, we're casting down imaginations. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. We're casting down imaginations. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. You and I have the mind of Christ. Make sure you're putting that full armor on every day. I make sure I do it every morning. I mean, I told you, I have it on the mirrors. I have it on the front door. Before you head out that door, make sure you're putting that full armor on. Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, the whole armor of God. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the walls of the devil. Verse 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the principal, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Verse 13, therefore take up the whole armor of God, then be able to withstand the evil day and having done all to stand. Verse 14, stand therefore having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, Verse 15, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. 
verse 19. And for me, that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly. That's right. We got to open our mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which an ambassador in chains that it may that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Amen. So we've got to put that full armor on daily, saints. It's so important. All right. Now I'm putting up some news here by Underground, which I've been talking to you about the cor coronavirus that is spreading. Okay. I told you it's a, a biological weapon. I really truly believe that because of what Bill Gates said. Um, that he knew about it. And what about that book I told you that was done? What year was it? 1981 or something like that. Um, now, here's another article. T Today, China begins disinfecting banknotes and quarantining them for 14 days, saints. China has today started disinfecting and isolating used banknotes in an effort to stop the spread of the coronavirus that has killed 15. 1,527 people. Banks use ultraviolet light or high temperatures to disinfect yen bills. Then they seal and store the cash for 7 to four, 14 days, depending on the severity of the outbreak in a particular region before recirculating them. Chinese banks use ultraviolet light, it says. All right, I just said that. The virus, which has infected 66,492 people in China, which I believe there's more. There's just not saying. And spread to more than two dozen other countries has sparked a rush to disinfect public places and minimize contact between people. According to the World Health Organization, COVID-19, that's what they were calling it now, can be spread through contaminated objects in addition to droplets and direct contact with infected patients. I said, wow, saints, this is smacking your face. The new world order, the Antichrist, and a new money system is about to be unleashed. Well, fear no evil God, you are with us through the storm, and he is. We don't need to be afraid, okay? Doctors in China are warning a deadly coronavirus reinfection, sudden death. You know, they're saying here, doctors working on the front lines of the novel coronavirus COVID-19 outbreak has told the Taiwan Times that it's possible to become reinfected by the virus leading to death from sudden heart failure. In some cases, you can go watch that. All right, I pulled this up. It says new virus has infected more than 69,000 people globally, which I believe I told you. They're not telling you. I think there's more. I told you that they're making um, that communism, that they're making them vow in the streets and in the hospitals. Can you believe that? Uh, many tanks disinfecting city streets deadly coronavirus outbreak in China. Authorities in China have res resorted to using remote control operated mini tanks to disinfect city streets amid the deadly coronavirus outbreak. They're saying now it's over 70,500 is what they're saying. And they're saying that that this was originally designed to disinfect prisons and can cover up to 540,000 square feet in just an hour. Now, they're saying that the coronavirus leads to food shortage and meat prices to increase. Coronavirus fears force China into mass chicken called Beijing to import U.S. birds as traffic shutdown leads to poultry feed shortages. Farmers have already slaughtered at least 100 million young chickens. Because travel restrictions imposed to control the spread of the coronavirus have blocked shipments of animal feed. Now, I don't know if you saw this, but locusts that, remember I talked about reach, um, they were in Africa, has now, since the coronavirus hit China after wrecking havoc over in Africa. I couldn't believe this. A gigantic swarm of locusts that belong to a plague that has ravaged millions of acres of crops across East Africa has been flat reaching the Chinese border, they're saying. Billions of the insects have destroyed food supplies across Kenya, Somalia, and Ethiopia in what has been described as the worst plague for decades. Well, you know, that was in the Bible during Egypt those times. Um, with vast swaths of the population in the region already facing food shortage due to poverty, the United Nations has warned action must be taken to avoid another shock to the region. All right. Uh, I saw this. Japan's economy shrinks 6.3%.
as a sales tax increases the cool's consumption. They're saying here, following a dismissal final quarter of 2019 in Tokyo, Japan, their economy is facing the risk of recession because the coronavirus outbreak is hurting tourism and production. While Germany's bank called on the government in Berlin to use its surplus to support growth as a broader danger of a slowdown bills. Japan, the world's third largest economy after the United States and China, contracted an annualized rate of 6.3% in the October-December quarter, worse than the economist's forecast of a 3.9 contraction. The biggest reason was a sharp drop in private consumption after the national sales tax rose to 10% on October 1st from 8%. Because of the novel coronavirus weakness and consumption will likely continue, they're saying. Some economists, including uh, Ms. Ishwashta, say Japan could fall into a technical recession. Germany's bank said that they see no sign of improvement in the growth outlook in the first quarter of 2020. Germany's economy, the Euro Europe's largest, has stagnated for almost two years. As the international trade tensions weighed large manufacturing sector. That outbreak of China, the coronavirus, is an additional threat, they're saying. All right. Apple is also warning um, that there's going to be delays weakened because of the demand in China because of the coronavirus. See, the, so all this is going to be hurting our economy. And then nobody's talking about this. Remember, I told you in December that I heard the Holy Spirit say to me that China was going to back out of the trade deal. So are we going to see that? I told you they are propping up the economy up and down like a seesaw. They know something's coming. All right. One more article I'm going to share with you. Did you see this? Boy Scouts of America filed for bankruptcy after sex abuse lawsuits. I couldn't believe this. You know, the Boy Scouts of America, they filed Chapter 11. You know, Boy Scouts, I mean, everyone used to do Boy Scouts and um, Girl Scouts. Remember? I mean, what has happened? I mean, now there are those in there in, that were part of them that um, had to do with sexual abuse, and they had cases against them. A sexual abuse settlements had reportedly strained the Boy Scouts' finances with states passing laws last year so victims from long ago abuse can sue for damages. I mean, this is terrible. I mean, what is our nation coming to? I've talked to um, President Donald Trump, not, um, not personally, but I've sent him letters and I told him what we're allowing here in America with um, the same-sex marriage and killing millions of babies. And i got a word for you in just a minute. We're going to take a break. We're going to play the song, Lord, I Believe in You. So listen to this. I'll be right back. Oh, 
my God we serve. All right, I'm going to share this word with you that the Lord uh, gave me on 2, 16, 20. We're almost there, saints. I know without a shadow of a doubt we are almost there. I keep saying that, but you know, God says precept upon precept. So um, I do feel in my spirit we are almost there. And I mean, can you believe this month is almost over? We're almost in the month of March, saints. I'm telling you, the the days, the minutes, the hours, they're flying. I don't know about you, but I, I, you, those that are in the spirit know exactly what I'm talking about. You can feel it. My heart goes out to you that are having the word. Lord, I just pray for them right now. Lord, I ask you to give them grace and strength, Lord, because I know that they're tired, Lord, and that they're having to work around people that are not Christians, Lord. And, uh, Lord, it's not easy because I, you know, I used to work in the world, Lord. I ask that you'd help them, Lord. Give them grace and strength, Lord, to love the unlovely, Lord. To, uh, that you would touch their co-workers, Lord, that they'd be witnesses for you and give them abundant strength today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Now, I'm going to share this word with you. Um, it's called prepare for destruction. I'm telling you, it's coming. You know, I put this, I got this one uh, on the 16th at 2.51 a.m. in the morning, and I was hearing the Holy Spirit. He, he was saying a lot of different things, you know, and I really believe he's filling us um, with those chosen servants that are going to be going out there with 
a lot of his word because I I don't know if you know it like uh, there are times where I'm I'm sleeping uh, I can hear myself preaching or speaking God's word I don't know do you ever do that let me know you know write a little comment down let me know but there are times I'm laying in bed I you know I, I that's why I feel like I'm not sleeping because my mind is always active. And so there are times I can hear, hear myself preaching or I'm, I'm speaking God's word. And so I was just wondering if you if you ever have that. All right, let me share this word with you. My children, what what you are what you are seeing is only the beginning, says the Lord. There is more to come. There is no more time to warn you, my children, of the disaster that is about to be unleashed on America and the entire world. See, we're about to see something, saying God is about to wake us up. Prepare today for your world to change. And I've been saying that our world is changing, and it's going to change quickly. It's going to go boom, just like that. You know, I told you that I had, um, I had a quick vision uh, the other day where I literally saw... Um, like this palm of of God's hand, and I saw Daniel and I in this hand, and we were like flying out of here, like we're not going to heaven, but I saw us traveling. We're we're in this palm, of, and I believe that was God showing He's covering us with His wings, and He's gonna keep us safe in the palm of His hands. But it's gonna happen suddenly, saints. Whatever God's getting ready to do is gonna be boom. We're not gonna even know. It's just gonna happen, and and that. Uh, so this is more what he said. He said, I, the Lord, will hide you, my sons and daughters, in the shelter of my wings, says the Lord. Come away a while. Go into your inner rooms and seek me now, I hear the Lord say. I, Lord, have warned you, sons and daughters, over and over again. Many are still not waking up to the signs of the times. You are still sleeping, says the Lord. I, the Lord, am coming now to wake you up. And I've given this several times. I'm going to keep sharing it. The Holy Spirit gave me that vision on 12, 5, 17 about the baby shaken syndrome, okay? And he said, this is what God's going to do to the world and the church. He's going to shake you up. And that's what it is because I don't want a baby, but I looked it up. It says, a definition of the shaken baby syndrome, also called the shaken impact syndrome, he described the syndrome as the constellation of signs and symptoms resulting from violent shaking or the shaking and impacting of the head of an infant or small child and see that's what god's gonna do saying god is gonna wake up the church he's gonna wake the the world up you know if you don't want to listen to what i'm saying and what other prophetic servants are, are saying god's just gonna do it he's got a way of waking all of us up and getting our attention because God's going to have his way, okay? We're not going to tell God what to do. He's God, and God can do whatever he wants, you know? He's the one that brought us in this earth, and he's the one that can take us out. He said this, No one is listening to the warning signs that I, the Lord, have, have been giving. I will now shake the heavens and earth once again. Prepare now for destruction, says the Lord. I, the Lord, am a merciful God, showing my mercy for thousands of generations. This generation is worse than the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. And it is. We're living in a modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. Did I not judge them for their willful sinning? I, the Lord, will judge you too. I, Lord, am very patient. I wait, 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 and keep waiting. And God is. God is a merciful God. You know, he waits and waits and waits. And he, he said this, America still has not repented of their willful sins. Your sins have reached my ears, says God Almighty. The United States has killed millions of my unborn babies every year, not even thinking twice for what they are doing. Killing is an abomination, says the Lord. Thou shall not murder. That is what the United States has done, murdered my unborn children. Just like you've taken my children out, I, the Lord, will take you out of this world, never to be heard or seen again. Ooh. That's what I heard him say. United States, you've allowed homosexuality, same-sex marriage, and transgenderism to run rampant in your nation. That is another abomination, says the Lord. I, Lord, made a man and a woman to produce offspring. Two men or two women is an abomination. I, Lord, hate sin, not the sinner. I sent my son, Jesus Christ, into the world to die for sinners. 
Repent now, says the Lord, of your sins today, so I, the Lord, will forgive you. If you choose not to repent, says the Lord, you will spend your eternity in hell. For destruction is coming, says the Lord. I, Lord, am your only hope. Only I, the Lord, can help you through the storm. No other God can do miracles like me, says the Lord. Call upon me today, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to save you. And that was all that God gave me. And maybe I'm talking to you and you still have not given your heart and life to Christ. Today's your day. Stop putting it up. I know there are those that keep putting it up. I don't know what you're waiting for. I'm going to tell you. It's going to be like, boom, it's just going to happen. And there are going to be those that are not going to get a second opportunity to receive the Lord. And it is so sad. If you do not know Christ today, I want to pray with you. Don't pray it out of fear. Don't pray it just to pray it. Pray it because you mean business. If you mean business, God does. Surrender your heart and your life to Christ. Do it now. Don't wait. Don't keep putting it off and saying later. Later may never come. You know, my dad used to say to my mom, we'll do this later. Well, you know what? My mother died. It's too late. It's not too late for you. You still have time. You still have time to give your heart and life to Christ. I know there's those I'm talking to that are ready to turn this station off. All right? Don't turn it off. God's talking to you. If God is knocking at the door of your heart saying, let me in, are you going to let Christ in? Or are you going to continue to ignore the warnings? He's giving you warnings. He's asking you to let him in. But if you continue to refuse, he'll only knock so many times and that'll be it. Today is your day for salvation, not tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We're here one minute and gone the next. I told you, I laid in bed the other day with the covers over my head, and it was dark, and I was thinking about all those people that are in hell, that are burning right now, that are, they died. And you know something? They're going to wish that they were never even born. That's how bad it's going to get. Do you hear me? There are people in hell right now burning. Do you want to go to hell? I'm talking to you. Don't be stubborn. Don't be say, oh, that's not for me. Oh, yes, it is for you. It's for all of us. We all need Jesus. He's not a crutch. We all need a Savior. You need Jesus Christ in your heart and life now. Do you hear me? I'm talking to you. There are those that are stubborn and will not come to Christ. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to change you. I'm not here to change you. I'm here to plant the seed. Others may come water, and then that you may just die suddenly. There may not be an opportunity. This may be your only opportunity. You can't stand before the Lord and say you never heard. Because Prophet is Dawn O'Brien, servant of the Lord, warned you and tried to tell you. Not just me, but other servants as well. If you do not know Christ and you want to give your heart and life to him, I want to pray with you. I want you to bow your head right where you're at. Just bow your head and repeat this prayer and mean it. Don't say it out of fear. Say, Dear Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me and wash me in your blood. Come into my heart and save me. I believe you died for me, Jesus. To give me eternal life. I receive you now, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. Amen, amen. Now, if you said that prayer and you meant it, go share the good news with someone. Go tell them what Christ has just done for you. This is the happiest day of your life. I'm going to tell you right now, nothing is more important. Go in here, go in there, plan this, plan that. Nothing is. Your salvation is more important than anything else. Wrestle that or the address is up on the screen. If the Holy Spirit has just saved you today or done something in your life, let us know. Let us know what God is doing for you. Father, I want to pray. Maybe you're sick in body today. Maybe you're waiting for God to heal you. It's coming, saints. Don't give up. My miracle hasn't come yet, but it's coming. You can't give up on your miracle. Are you waiting to be healed? Are you waiting for deliverance? Are you struggling with something? Let's pray. Agree with me. Combine your faith. Let's pray. Father, we as a body of believers come together in agreement, Lord. We connect our faith, Father. You said wherever two or more agree, Father, you are in the midst. I pray for them, Lord. I pray for them, and we agree as a body of believers, Lord. There are those that are sick in body, Lord. I ask you, Lord Jesus, that you would heal them today. In Jesus' name, be healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. I speak healing over you right now in Jesus' name. 
I pray for those that need deliverance. I speak deliverance in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is you're going through, whatever it is, you be set free and delivered. Your miracles shall come forth in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. Just believe. Have faith. What's faith? Faith is something of things hoped for. We yet not see. No, it's not here yet. But that don't mean it's not coming. You may not see it yet. All right? But you got to have faith. Remember, was it Elijah that saw the cloud? That little bitty cloud. We have to have faith. No, I don't see it yet. And God keeps telling me it's coming. I'm like, God, where is it? Where is it? You tell him to get out of this game. Wait, God, wait. We have to have faith. We have got to believe. I told you that book I'm writing, Men and Women, God coming out of caves. You're going into that lion's den. We're getting ready to go in lion's den. There's going to be others that are going to fall. Keep serving the Lord. Press on. Don't give up. Do you hear me? There are those that are going through trials right now. I'm talking to you. Don't give up. Whatever you're going through, Press on, persevere, fight the good, fight of faith. Don't give up. And here's another word I'm going to share with you real quick that God gave me like a vision where, well, I, well not, I shouldn't say a vision. It's like um, revelation, maybe. It's more of a revelation. All right. At 3.56 a.m. at 2.16.20, he showed me this. And I looked up the meaning. I'm going to talk to you about this. I said, God, you're so awesome. God showed me, and this was, you know, we, I know this before, I've talked about this, how like we're in military going through um, training, but he showed me that what we have been going through is boot camp. Say it's you're in boot camp, all right? He's been preparing us for such a time as this. If you've been in training all along, then you are prepared and ready for what's ahead. That's right. And, he said, if not, you're going to have a really hard time. Now, God is going to wake people up that have been sleeping. There are those that have been sleeping for years are now going to wake up. They're going to see the light. A light in them is going to turn on, I feel the Lord is saying. Now, and I looked up the word boot camp, and I got to share this with you because I thought this was so awesome. It says, a Navy or Marine Corps camp. For basic training, a disciplinary facility, you know, and that's what we're going through, discipline. God is disciplining us. Or program which young offenders are forced. You notice how it said forced to participate, you know, and I thought about that. You know, when you, I know Daniel and I have gone through this and there are things that God has forced us to do that we didn't want to do. And maybe you feel like you're forced to doing certain things. But see, God is preparing you for what is ahead. It says, forced to participate in a rigidly structured routine. A military training camp for new recruits with strict discipline. A short, intensive, and rigorous course of training. <laughs> Do you feel like that? I'm telling you. I, I feel like that. Rigorous training where it's like it just keeps coming on, you know. And that's what we've been going through. And I know there are others that are going through the same thing. Just keeps coming. It don't stop, right? You know exactly what I'm talking about. The Lord has been building up a strong army for now. You and I that have been going through strict training are prepared to go forth in spiritual warfare. See, and I told you we're going to go to war. And, you know, I'm like Deborah, Deborah the prophets, you know, all right. I feel the Holy Spirit's given that to me. It's a gift, and all praise, honor, and glory goes to Jesus, where I'm going to be speaking to the president, giving him advice. You know, Deborah gave the king advice, and I believe we're going to have to go to war, saints. Just like Deborah brought the king, they, they, they and the people went to war, we're going to go to war. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. Uh, this is from the Amplified. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run their, their very best to win, but only one receives the prize? Run your race in such a way that you may seize the prize and make it yours. Verse 25. Now every athlete who goes into training and competes in the games is disciplined and exercises self-control in all things. See, we have to have self-control. We have to be disciplined. They do it to win a crown that withers, but we do it to receive an imperishable crown that cannot wither. Verse 26, therefore, I do not run without a definite goal. I do not flail around like one beating the air, just shed a boxing. Verse 27, but like a boxer, I strictly discipline my body 
and make it my slave. See, we're in boot camp. We're disciplining our buds. We're disciplining our flesh. All right? In boot camp here. So after I've preached the gospel to others, I myself will not somehow be disqualified as unfit for service. All right? That's what God gave me. So we're in boot camp, saints. <laughs> That's what you're going through right now. God's preparing you. He's building up a strong army uh, so that we can go forth. All right? He gave me a word, chosen. You're about to be tested. I'm not going to read that right now. But um, you're being tested. What side of the fence are you on? See, saints, we're going to have to make a decision. Are you going to be on the Lord's side or the enemy's side? you got to decide. All right. God's not going to do it for you. You've got to make your own decision. Let's pray. I'm going to pray for all of us. Pray for our president. Father, we come together as a body of believers, Lord. Pray for our heads of protection over all of us, Lord. Keep us safe in the coming days, Lord. I believe a change is coming, Lord, and you are preparing your people to boot through boot camp. We're about to go to spiritual war, Lord. We're not afraid. We're not worried. Our hope and our trust is in you, Lord Jesus. We uh, pray for President Donald Trump. We don't worship him. We worship you, Jesus. But we lift him up as a commander-in-chief of this nation that he will make the right decisions that we as a nation need to repent and seek you and turn from our wicked ways. Lord, there's so much sin that is running rampant in our nation, Lord. I pray, oh God, that you'd wake the, the Trump administration up, wake President Donald Trump up, wake those up that are working around him. Lord, wake up the prayer warriors. He's got himself a prayer team, but the, for some reason they're not letting him know that don't mess with Israel. Don't go there. So, Father, I ask that you would um, surround him with prayer warriors that have your heart, Lord, that are not interested in making a buck, but are interested in doing what you've asked them to do, Lord, because it's not about them. It's about you, Lord. We want to give you the praise, and you're looking out for the American people, Lord, and you need people that you're calling up in these last days because we are going to go through spiritual warfare in our nation and in our world, Lord. The world's changing. These countries are changing. We can't trust Russia, China, North Korea, Iran. They're all getting weapons, Lord. And we've got to be led by your spirit. We can't be led by, by ourselves and doing whatever we feel like doing. No, we've got to be led by your spirit, whether we should go to war or not, whether we should do this or do that. Father, we can't be led by our own head, Lord. Father, I pray your will be done. Keep us all safe in the palm of your hands, Lord. But keep your Christians safe, our families safe. Lord, touch our families that need to know you. Touch this world, Lord God. We pray for a mighty revival. We want to see your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We believe, Lord, the greatest revival is about to come forth, Lord. And great miracles you said we shall do. We believe, Lord, we believe. We have faith. We're not going to be afraid or worried, Lord. Our times are in your hands, Lord. We're not going to be worried about this virus, Lord. We ask you to kill this virus. Keep it away from your Christians, Lord. Keep us safe. Keep us walking in your ways, I pray today in Jesus' name. Now we ask that you go with each one of us, Lord. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. All right, saints, I want you to know we love you. We're praying for you. Please keep us in your prayers. If you'd like to help this ministry out, I'm personally going to ask you because, you know, I have to make copies of all these papers um, I, I, because the Holy Spirit wants me to do this because I feel in time we're going to have an EMP. That's right. Daniel always asks me, why are you making copies? I said, because what if the power goes out and we don't have uh, the um, power? We can't print nothing out. So I have copies. In fact, we almost lost it years ago. And God had me making copies all along. Praise God. God, that's what he's doing. So I'm asking for you personally to help me out. I need help because I have to buy this ink. It's like 50 something, $60 every, I don't know, every month I've been buying it, it seems like, lately. And um, our rent over here is like $1,300. You know, they, they're, they're moving up with the water bill, it seems like. I mean... <laughs> We watch our spending, but I'm telling you, saying the cost of living is going up. If you'd like to help us, um, and you want to put a gift to my dad, to Dawn, Prophet is Dawn, I can use your help, and then you want to give me something for my ink. Uh, Dawn's Heartfelt Corner, P.O. Box 161273, Altamont Springs, Florida, 32716. You can get, send a gift there. 
Uh, if you'd like to partner, whether it's 5, 10, 15, whatever the Holy Spirit's leading you, you can give a gift right online right now. It'll come to us through PayPal at heartfeltcorner10 at gmail.com. You can also partner at www.dawnsheartfeltcorner.org. You'll see my blonde hair there. I had my blonde hair back then. Now that I'm older, I've got the dark hair, which I like better. Daniel keeps saying I'm much but I don't want to be blonde. You know, blonde hair washes me out. I don't like my hair blonde. I like my hair. It's like a burgundy. Um, but you know, it's not about that though. God knows my heart, you know. So, hey, we can look good in tribulation. That's what I always say. We can look good in tribulation no matter what we're going through. All right. We can praise God. All right. We can rejoice and praise him and thank him for all the blessings that he gives us. All right, I'm going to list all the information up there for you, and you just be led by the Holy Spirit, but you want to be given to those that you see that God's using, whether it's our ministry or some other ministry. All right, saints, we love you. We're praying for you. Please keep us in your prayers. I know you're praying for me. I can feel it. I did sleep, like I said, last night. I thank God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Those little things that we take for granted, food, water, sleep, you know, all those things that we take for granted, saints. We have to remember who gives us all those things. We in America are spoiled, and that includes me. We all are. We forget God's goodness and mercy. Lord, help us not to forget. Forget everything that you give us daily, Lord, that we are freely enjoyed. This all comes from you, Jesus. We love you. Amen. All right, saints, I'm going to let you go. And um, I don't know when I'll talk to you. I told you I'll do these videos when I can. But you've got to be strong, saints. You've got to pray. You've got to be encouraged. Stay encouraged. Read your word. Put some Christian music on. Do whatever it takes. But stay close to Jesus. It's so important. Because I'm telling you right now, our world is going to change. And it's going to be boom. It's going to just happen. Are you going to be ready? Are you going to be doing what the world's wanting you to do? All right. I'll talk to you soon.